principles, we talked about the concept of Web 2.0. Just as a review, what did Web 2.0 mean? What did Web 2.0 mean? Or what does it mean? What are some of the components of Web 2.0? What are some of the components of Web 2.0? Come on. Just like class. What was one thing? Maya? Okay, viral marketing, right. One of the things that, that, that is different about the web than a traditional market space is it's much easier to go viral, right? Word of mouth is one way to go, things go viral and news media, but it's very easy to do so uh, online. And, and you know, companies try to incent you to do that. They use this hashtag, tag your friends in it, challenge your friends. You know, things go viral. We know, we know that term uh, because of the way the internet is, is set up, the way it's developed. What else? What are some other components of Web 2.0? What pays for Web 2.0? Because they use software as a service, and usually that software is free, right? Gmail, search, we talked about Google. What pays for Web 2.0? Yes? Okay, right. A lot of times, what they call it is they monetize the site, okay? Monetize, it's a good business word. Monetize means creating value, creating money from something we're doing. If I wanted to, uh, monetize my research, I would require you guys to buy textbooks I write, right? I monetize that thing, okay? So monetize a website is to make money for it. And one thing about Web 2.0 is use increases value. The more people that use a service, the more value we can generate from that. And Christina's right, a big component of Web 2.0 is advertising, okay? And what form of advertising did we discuss? What was the form of advertising we Okay, pay per click kind of advertising. And pay per click advertising, as the name subscribe says, you only pay when someone clicks on your ad, okay? Someone clicks on your ad. And we use the biggest pay per click advertising uh, uh, program in the world is AdWords, okay? PPC, Google AdWords. And we said first they display your ad, and what is that called when your ad is shown? but not necessarily clicked on, just it's shown visually, yes. It's called an impression, okay? And you as a customer do not pay for impressions. What you do pay for though is hopefully from that impression, you get a click. And think about that, a click is like an interaction. It's like, it's like saying, yes, I'm interested, right? At least I accidentally clicked on it, but it's, it's an expression that is something you actively do, okay? A click, and if we take Clicks divided by impression, what do we call that? Clicks divided by impressions is called what? Rate. It's called a click-through rate, CTR, okay? And that's important, right? It's like, say, how many people were interested in this, yes? Uh, 1,000 people saw the ad, 40 people clicked on it. What kind of click-through rate did the book talk about ads get? Not very low, fairly low, about what? It said it was higher for mobile, than on, on, a, on a laptop or, a, or a, a desktop. But a lot of that can, might be attributed to like fat fingers. But what, what were the rates? You guys remember what the click-through rates were about? Yes, no? About 2% to 4%, okay? Not high, right? Not high, so of 100 impressions, maybe two clicks, maybe three clicks, maybe four clicks. So we can target those things. Clicks we hope lead to a sale or someone filling out a form or someone doing some behavior we want them to do. What do we call that when they do the behavior we want them to do? What do we call that? <coughs> what do we call that? So they, they click, yes. Conversion. We call it a conversion. And a conversion can be, hey, they bought what the hell we just advertised. They filled out a form. They asked for more information, whatever it might. We call that a conversion rate. So from that, think about the beauty of pay-per-click advertising versus other forms of advertising versus a couple things. We can actually see, hey, we paid this much for these ads, right? This is how much the clicks cost us, and it generated this many sales. We know how much we make. We can figure out return on investment, right? Is this campaign working for us? Are we, are we, are we making more money than we're spending on this campaign? Is it bringing more customers to our door that are buying than if we did do this campaign? So it's very easy for us to, 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 to say how good this is doing. And how about the difficulty of setting up a PPC campaign? Easy, hard. Easy or difficult? Hell, we did it in class, like in 10 minutes. I mean, it was a bogus campaign, was it not? And I, 
I really want to go into more of the nuance as if we were doing this in an e-commerce class, but it's pretty damn easy to do that, right? Our ad can be up and running in a matter of minutes, okay, with the right expertise. So it's unbelievable what we can do. The other advantages of this kind of advertising is what? It can be very, very targeted. You said, I, I, I said, only 50 miles within Loretto radius, right? I could say, people who speak this language, only on these mobile devices, only on these keywords, right? Very, very targeted instead of general. Very good. So that was a big component of Web 2.0. What else do we say about Web 2.0? What do we call sites that are always kind of in, you know, they're always kind of developing, they're always kind of like in this test mode almost. What do we call that, that mode? It's beta, right? Beta mode. Okay, a lot of times you see they're in beta. And we also talk about an organic interface. What does an organic interface mean when we talk about Web 2.0? Yeah, something we customize, right? So many pieces of software, it is what it is, right? But when we talk about Web 2.0, it can be customized towards you. And a lot of social media would, would fall under Web 2.0. Heck, my Facebook looks a lot different than your Facebook. My, 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 okay, my Google home screen looks a lot different than yours. So Web 2.0 has really transformed the internet. It transformed you know, the way we do business and the way we sell things online. We said that was good, but we also want to use people became accustomed to that level, okay, that level of interaction, that level of ability and features and function. So quickly, or not quickly, but, but they wanted that same kind of stuff in their organization. So it moved from Web 2.0 to something called Enterprise 2.0. And Enterprise 2.0, I believe, is where we left off. And Enterprise 2.0, these are some of the components of Enterprise 2.0. First of all, we can search. Okay? We can search the knowledge base of our organization. We can search for policies. We can search for previous consulting jobs. We can search for someone with a skill set that we might need on our project. We can search, right? We don't have to just talk to them. We can search, just like we do on the web. The second thing is links. You know, there are hyperlinks. So we're reading an article about this. You can hyperlink to this previous job. So there are links. We already talked about that. Authoring. We can provide. We can. We can provide tools so that our employees can author content, create content in, as part of our organization. We talked about tags. You guys know what tags are very well. Tags are. Uh, flexible tagging, like delicious results. Uh, we also call it folksonomy. Folksonomy, taxonomy means how we classify things. A folksonomy is how people develop, uh, classify things. The last two things I don't think we talked about, and these are very, very powerful. Something called extensions, okay? Extensions are a way to extend the capability and customize the capability based on what you have done or what you have seen. Give me an example of extension. Give me an example of something you use, even on the web, maybe it's not for an organization, but something you use on the web that is customized for you based on the input you have given. Christina? Pandora. Pandora is one example, right? You like these 10 songs, so they're gonna play a song that you they think you may like as well, okay? What else? What other things are like that? What other things are like that? So Pandora, give me another website. Yes. Like Amazon. Okay, very good. Amazon, if I go to Amazon right now and say, uh, here are recommendations for who? John Miso, right? Not for Ian, not for Brandon, not for Ashley, for John Miso. Based on what? What is it based on? What I've been buying. Netflix, based on the movies you rank, right? Based on the movies you rank. So sometimes extensions are creating increased functionality, increased you know, uh, focus, like if you go to uh, based on what you've done before. Uh, so if I work in an organization and I've looked at a lot of, I don't know, information on project management policies, Maybe any kind of new article or new content in our organization regarding project management automatically <laughs> comes up. This, this is something you might be interested in. This is a policy that may affect you as department chair. So those are what extensions are, okay? Building increased functionality based on behavior. Uh, and it's, a, it's kind of a, it's, it's really, extensions really change things. Um, we now, how often does Pandora miss you? Like miss, 
song, you're like, what the hell is that? That doesn't, that's nothing like anything I like. Did you ever, did you ever get that? Yeah. Not too often. What would you give it? Pandora, how many people use Pandora? Okay, what would you give it on a scale of 1 to 10? The, it, its ability to play a song for you. Yeah. You give it a 9? So you're, that's good? You say it's that good? Yeah. Not that many stinkers. Six. Uh, I think it's okay, okay? But there are, there are times, like, I guess I have very eclectic taste, you know, and I think they're kind of all over the map. So um, what they do, though, this is what they actually do, and I've discovered they, they, they take what they think you'll like, right? They, what they think you'll like, and this might maybe when you get a stinker once in a while. They take what you think you'll like, and they have like a kind of a, 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 a life circle, if you will. And then on occasion, they choose one outside the circle, right? It's almost like, you know, introducing you to something else. They say, okay, let's see if, you know, this is really what he has told me is his, his like, let's, let's try something else, okay? So they do it intentionally to try to expand your circle. And I've discovered, I don't know, I really, I have discovered bands that I've never, never heard of, and I'm like, wow, I'm really, really into this, right? So and they do that on occasion, okay? And a lot of times, uh, we can do that in organizations as well. You know, we can say, you know, that we can suggest something that's outside. Netflix algorithm, all the industry says is a little bit better than Pandora, okay, as, as far as, as recommendation is, but that's what it extends to. Uh, the last one is a signal, okay? A signal is something you can set up to push content to you. Remember, push versus pull? Push content to you if new content arrives, okay? If it's something you're interested in and new content arrives. And I guess a good example of this, so you can do it inside your organization, but I use, anyone use Google Alerts? Everyone here of Google Alerts? No? I'm the only one here that uses Google Alerts. Uh, I'll log into my Google Alerts. So this is, I use Google Alerts, and what it does is it's always running in the background, and any news articles or any new content on the whole internet, okay, that has these keywords, I get an email telling me about it, okay? For example, you know, obviously, I, I, St. Francis University is something that, that I care about, that I work at, and I want to know if it shows up in the media any given way. So what do you think I get? So I get these probably more often than not, St. Francis University alerts. And you can, you can set up alerts that come at a certain time. What do you think I get more often than not? When is St. Francis University in national media? It doesn't have to be national media, but just media in general. Athletics, a lot of times I get, you know, football did this, basketball did this, men's soccer did this, but you know, those are the kind of things I get. Uh, I also run one on, I, I'm a big fan of Charles Schwab, you know, Charles M. Schwab, the, and I, I like to know if there's anything new about him. Uh, obviously, I'm concerned about myself, right? If anyone's saying anything about me. So John Miko, you know, I'm vain. If anyone's saying something about John Miko on the web, it comes out. Pembok Fifth Edition, I run a project management company, and that's, that's the project management body of knowledge. I want to know new content on that. Um, this is my brother-in-law who gets in a lot of trouble, and uh, sometimes he shows up in the news, and my, I tell my wife uh, before, you know, before, like, family thing, but uh, that's my brother-in-law, so I, I find out. So if I go to my Gmail account, I'll show you what this might look like. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, I get an email, you know, every, not only when there's new content, but this was, I got this on what, November 10th, two days ago, and it was about, um, University of Cincinnati men's basketball was picked to finish fourth, but St. Francis University was mentioned in that because why, Earl? Because we're playing them tomorrow night, right? So probably in that article somewhere, okay, somewhere in that article somewhere, there's something about St. Francis University, right? And there's, there's times I've, you know, I've discovered people, for example, um, two years ago we had the, she is the CEO of the Financial Accounting Foundation. They set like the, the GASB standard. You guys know you ever GASB and FASB, okay? She is the CEO. She graduated from St. Francis University, and we didn't know that. But there was a press
press release when she was named CEO, it says in her press release she is a graduate of St. Francis University. So I said, hey, does anyone know this? Of course, we didn't know it. And then eventually we reached out to her and she came in and some gave a talk. So, so you know what I'm saying? Like this is, it's like me combing the internet every day for anything related to St. Francis University, but a signal goes out and does that for me. Okay? Uh, a lot of times job search applications do this. If anyone uses monster.com or any kind of careerbuilder.com, you can put a signal, you can put an alert out there saying, any jobs in accounting in this area, please push those to me. You guys know what I'm saying? Okay, That's what a signal is. So instead of you going out and combing everything, a signal goes out there and does that for you. And as soon as new content is, is arrived, it pushes it out to you. Okay, It pushes it out to you. So I don't know if I have any other more St. Francis University. I usually read them and delete them, so I don't see I, see I have any others in there. That's what I can read. Yeah, so field hockey. So most of most of the ones I get from St. Francis University, like I said, are about athletics. Okay, so these are all features and functionalities that that really organizations and enterprises kind of stole from what was happening on the web. They said, these are the features and functions that will maybe be more useful for us to, to increase our knowledge base. Okay, does this make sense? So the acronym is SLATE. Okay. All right, so let's move on. Okay, let's talk about something called capital. What is capital? And you probably had, you probably talked about capital in macroeconomics. What is capital? What is capital? In a business. That's it. Come on, you guys. What's capital? Capital investment. Have you heard of a capital investment? Or a, maybe fundraising does a capital campaign. What is capital in an organization? Capital is making an investment in something for future gain. So capital investment, what kind of things are capital investments? When I, I don't know, I buy Dr. Loeb, well, I don't buy it, but the department buys Dr. Loeb a new computer. That's really not a capital investment. What kind of things are capital investments? Well, we buy new pens for the school of business. That's not really a capital investment. What kind of things are capital investments? We have one that's not being talked about a great deal. That's a capital investment, right? They're usually big things that we undertake that have you know, significant investment, significant time, that they're gonna pay dividends, God bless you, for many future years, right? Like Schwab Hall, hell, that's gonna, that's, that's it for my, my lifetime, right? If I'm here till 80, I'm, Schwab Hall is it. That's gonna be the school of business, yes? So that's a capital investment because it's an investment for long-term future gain, okay? That's, that's, the, that's the basic definition of capital. What's human capital? What's human capital? Well, so let's talk about, now that's capital in general. What's human capital? What's an investment in human capital? What would an organization do when they're investing in human capital? Yes. Very good. We take you, Pablo, maybe you're making $100 an hour, and we say, for these next two weeks, Pablo, we're sending you to uh, DC, we're putting up you up in a hotel, you know, you're not doing any work for us, we're just training you for the next two weeks. And that happens, and that is a big investment because we're paying him to learn, right? And we're paying his travel and expenses, maybe 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars. And we're saying, well, what is that gonna benefit us? Well, hopefully, the expertise that he gains from that benefits us as an organization in the future, okay? You guys, in a big degree, are investing in human capital right now by going to college for four years, right? It's, it's, right now, it's not a win-win situation, right? You're, you probably have only have, you know, it's probably not financially a great time for you in your life, but you're investing in yourself as human capital for long-term future gain. Okay, that's the deal. So how about the next one? What is social capital? And that's what we want to focus on right now. What is social capital? So we talked about capital in general. We talked about human capital. What is social capital? What do you think social capital is? In a word, what is social capital? What 
is an investment in social happiness. Katie? Is it advertising? Uh, it could be. It could be. Be like you're putting it out and then just because I can make more money doing research. Okay, it is. Um, and it could be it could be advertising engaged in, in, in making social relationships with customers. You guys actually may be investing in social capital right now. How about if you are a member of fraternity or sorority? Is anyone a member of fraternity or sorority in here? Okay. One of the selling points, what do, the, what do they say is the selling points to be in a fraternity? Like you guys don't have your houses anymore. That was always a selling point when I was in school. But what is one of the selling points of being in a fraternity? Networking. Okay, networking. They say, if you're a teak brother, look at all these people in positions of leadership that are teak brothers, and you can go into that interview and do the secret handshake, and maybe they don't know you from Adam, but you are a brother. Right? And just because of that relationship, maybe they hire you over someone else, right? Or maybe you get that promotion because, hey, we are Teak brothers, or we are Alpha brothers, or Deller brothers, whatever it might be. Not just the St. Francis, but maybe that national charter, right? That is what social capital is. In a word, social capital is in networking, okay? Think about it. Networking is what social capital is. It is a couple things, okay? So let's talk about Social capital, let's see if I can find that. Okay, so we've talked about physical capital, produce goods and services, factories, machines, manufacturing equipment, human knowledge and skills. Social capital is social relations with expectations of marketplace returns in the future. It is an investment in a relationship, not for just for the sake of the relationship, which really kind of sounds bad, but also for maybe future gain. Like, you know, I know this person. So, so what are some of the elements, the value of social capital? What makes social capital value? What, what kind of things can we get from social capital, from networking? What are some things we can get, in general speaking, Christina? Okay, so what do we get connections, and what might connections bring us? Opportunities. Okay, opportunities, okay. So the book says social capital number is, can, be, can give us four different things. Okay, opportunities is part of that, yes, but kind of goes under the umbrella. The first thing it can give us is information, right? I happen to know someone, have you ever heard that? Someone like, a guy I know who works for this company said this, right? It's like insider information, that always makes you like, I know a guy, like everyone always knows a guy, right? And you, you, you take that information, like, wow, this is like secret information I'm getting here, right? I'm getting secret knowledge. Uh, John Nico works at St. Francis, he knows there's a position coming up in this department, he told me. That is one thing that social capital will give you. Information and it's not generally available, right? <clears throat> Information, expertise, uh, that is what one thing that social capital can give you. Just generally information, okay? The second thing it can get you is influence. What does it mean, what do you mean by influence? What do we mean by influence? What do you mean by influence? influence, right? Why, why is that kid getting to play? When they maybe more than they deserve? Influence, right? Because they have a relationship because it's his dad's a coach or whatever it might be. That's influence. But it also works in organizations that way. You know, I play racquetball with this person, you know, and, they, and they, you know, they, they're up for a promotion. There's two people up for promotion. You know, I'm probably going to get it over this person because, hey, we go up for drinks on occasion, right? I have influence. I, I might be able to influence decisions. The third thing is social credentials. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does social credentials mean? What does social credentials mean? Yes. Putting on your reputation, kind of? Yeah, okay. So, like name drop, right? You think about, you ever, you ever hear anyone name drop? Like, hey, I was hanging out. Like, maybe it's a, it's a cool person or. Maybe I, you know, me and the dean were hanging out, like, or me and the provost went kayaking or whatever it might be, right? That is someone saying, these are my social credentials. Like, I happen to be friends with you know, Jerome Bettis or whatever it might be. That is what social credentials are all about, saying, because I know this person, because I hang out with this person, you know, it elevates me to some degree. And the fourth one 
is just personal reinforcement of professional image or status. So this would be that you know I am an expert in project management, and I, I am I'm friends with the person that wrote the textbook, right? And I am. That would be you know that, that's me name dropping there, right? So that is that is a reinforcement of me as hey I'm in this circle, I'm in this project management expert circle, right? So personal reinforcement of professional image or status. So these are things, and on a personal level, that that social capital can bring. Okay, opportunity, networking, information, influence, social credentials, personal reinforcement. How about to an organization? How about to an organization? So we're thinking of this through the lens of a person, like me, like you, and what it can bring us. How about to an organization? Rich, Rich was only in here for 15 minutes, but you really hit upon this, okay? Maybe not exactly like the textbook did, but you remember Rich Kamari came in here and talked about, what did he do to try to get his Facebook followers up? What did he, or no, his, his Instagram followers up, what did he do? What's one of the um, things he did? Followed other page accounts of their followers. Okay, so, so think about that. He looked at, at people that had where he was, the, the people had, that in his market, fitness people, right, that had a lot of followers, and he began following them. Think about that, right? He said, I'm gonna follow you, and hopefully they follow him back, that's what he wanted, right? Hopefully they follow him back. But even if that, okay, he wanted the people that followed them as well, right? So he's trying to build that social relationship, right? He's, he's going out and trying to build that social relationship, like reciprocal follow, yes? So when we talk about social capital, the things we're looking for, okay, the three things that are important is the number of relationships. But that's not the be all and end all, why? Why is the number of relationships not all we define social capital? Why isn't that the be all and end all? Yeah, I may have a thousand friends, but what, go ahead. They may not be quality relationships. Okay, they may not be quality relationships. For example, you know, I, I doubt that someone has 1,500 Facebook followers, has a strong relationship with those 1,500 people, okay? There's actually a concept called Dunbar's number. Anyone ever hear of Dunbar's number? Dunbar's number, you can look it up on Wikipedia if you like. Uh, he, he studied tribes, okay? And there's tribes, you know, that, that when they got to a certain number, they break apart. You know what I mean? Because they're like, well, this got too big. And then they form another tribe. And he looked historically at this, you know, in, in all these countries over years and years and years. And what do you think that number was? What do you think it got to a certain point that said, you know what, I can't maintain a relationship, a tight knit relationship with all these people? What was Dunbar's number, do you think? Now, let's not, no, lower, geez, this, between 10 and 10,000, somewhere between 10 and 10,000. It's about 150, okay? Dunbar's number. So you may have 1,200, 1,500 Facebook friends, but it's it's unlikely you have. Now there are people who are called connectors that who can have a lot of relationships and a lot of tight relationships. But that, those are like outlier type people. But 150 people. Okay. So number of relationships isn't everything. It's important. Don't get me wrong. There's connectors. There's important. But as Pablo said, one of the things that also goes along with it is the strength of that relationship. When I did that little. Uh, when I did that little exercise with Facebook, you saw, you know, people that liked my stuff a lot, right? I had a strong relationship with them. It was people like my sister, my wife, my mother, right? People that are uptight with my family, right? That maybe, maybe these types of people. That's the strength of a relationship. We can see the strength of that relationship. So those two things are important. The number of relationships and the strength of those relationships. But what's really, really, really important? See, I only have one friend. Real tight, but his name is Mark Zuckerberg. Is that a, that, who has a stronger social network, me or you? Yeah. Me. Why? Yeah. Okay. Because the resources controlled by that relationship are off the damn charts, right? He could, if he wanted to, he could call and I could give me the, you know, a, a huge paying job somewhere. He could, you know, give me things, right? Think about it. We, resources controlled. So all these things come together, and it's more of what we call like a multiplicative model, okay? 
uh, a multiplicative model, meaning it's not an additive model. Like we just don't add these things up and arrive at a score, but these things build upon one another and they increase each other, mul multi multiply each other, if you will. So if I had uh, you know, a, a strong number of relationships, a high, uh, as tight with all those relationships, and they control a lot of resources, my social capital is off the chart. Um, there, is a, there is a site that tries to do this for personal social capital. You guys ever use this, a site called Clout? Do you ever hear of Clout? No? Let's go to Clout. I'll log into mine. This is my cloud score, okay? Cloud score, K-L-O-U-T, and you guys all have one, uh, whether you know it or not, if you sign up for cloud, it'll give you your score. Your cloud score looks at exactly that. It looks at your social media account, you have to tell it about your social media account, and it'll tell you the strength of your social capital. So what do you think goes into this? My, my score right now is 55.34, which is not too shabby, that's, that's pretty good by the way, okay? Uh, but there are parties and stuff like in, this is, this is kind of a couple years ago, there used to be parties where you'd have to have a certain cloud score to get in. You know, the only people that were like big influencers could get in. Like you have to have a cloud score of like 70 to get in. Okay, I won't tell you about the party. But what do you think goes into these things? What do you think goes into your social capital? So they look at things like number of followers, number of friends. They looked at LinkedIn, they looked at Twitter, they looked at Facebook, they looked at Instagram, whatever else. It looks like they have... I don't know what the green one is. Is that, is that Google Plus? Is that Vine? I can't think of what that one is. But Instagram. So they looked at those things. And what do you think they look at to say, hey, this person, you know, people listen to this person. People react to this person. Likes. What else? What on Twitter kind of says, like, hey, I saw this. Tweets and retweets, right? What do you think gets more influence, a retweet or a favorite? Sure, that's like saying, hey, this person said something. I want all my followers to know, right, as well. So think about that. That's like giving that person a lot of social capital. So it even shows you, like, you guys can check this out uh, on your own, but it shows you recent activity, your other networks. It tells you, you know, the things that got you to a certain point. Um, I think you can see, I haven't gone on here in a long time. Uh, let's see if I can see. be able to see your friends cloud score You used to be able to see your friends' cloud score as well, but I don't, I don't see that ability to do that right now. But this is a measure of, of social capital, okay? So uh, I'm running out of time here, so let me get back to this. So how do organizations, like we're talking this is personal right now, but how do organizations add value to their business through social capital? Well, a couple of things they do. Progressive organizations maintain a presence on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and other social media sites, okay? They encourage customers and interest parties to leave comments. So give me an example of where a company has asked you for your input, has asked you to respond to them, asked you to connect to them on Facebook or Twitter. Give me an example of that. Matt? Uh, like Starbucks. Okay, like what do they do? Give me an example. Part of their organization. Yeah? Give me an example. Like they plan everything with their audience. Okay. Like the first 5,000 followers. Okay. Two people to run away. So 
that's the way they're what, trying to up their number of relationships. That's the first thing they're doing, right? Remember, that was one of the components of social capital, up the number of relationships, yes? So both of those are examples of that. How do they try to strengthen that relationship? So that's up the number of relationships. How do they try to strengthen that relationship? Yes? Okay, very good. Like, I, I think MVP used to do that. If you checked in an MVP, I think, or IVP, you used to get like 10% off or something like that. Uh, so sure, that's one way they do it. They check in a place, it shows that you went there, kind of strengthens that relationship. What else do they do? My share points. What's that? Like my share points. Give me, I don't know what those are, go ahead. Oh, like, give a point of like, they, they might have something to check in a person or a buyer okay. or whatever, like give it like a free meal. Okay. So, so loyalty cards, yes, that's, that's one, one thing they do to try to, to gauge the strength of that relationship, for sure. Benjamin Franklin once said, if you want to get close to someone, ask them to do a favor for you. It's kind of crazy, it's kind of counterintuitive, right? But by doing that, you actually created a, a, a stronger relationship. Now, you can't go overboard with that, right? You can't ask them to do a favor for you every day. But give an example of how organizations ask customers to do a favor for have you ever seen this? No? Go ahead. You mean like a survey? Like fill out the survey? Okay, perhaps. Get free product. Okay, that's that's true. So do a favor for me. They're giving you something though in that right. as well, right? They're kind of giving you. So it's kind of they're saying, well, I'll do this for me, I'll give you something. But what if they ask a favor to help you? When do organizations ask a favor of you? And and, and people will oblige. They may, like, say they're, maybe it's a rum, okay, Bacardi rum. How might Bacardi rum ask customers to do a favor for them? On Facebook, say. Or Twitter, I don't care. What? Say, like, in a, in a post. How about they say, post your favorite Bacardi rum recipe, okay? What, how do you use Bacardi rum, right? Or how do you use our product, or whatever it might be, or post pictures of you using our product, or, you know, innovative ways that you use do you ever see these kind of things? Or maybe you suggest an add-on to our product or a new color for an M&M &M or whatever the hell it is. Have you seen this? What they're doing is asking you for a favor and when they do that, you feel like you're part, think about it, you feel like you're part of the company. You, you're, 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 you're suggesting a way to use their product. You're suggesting a new addition to the product. Go ahead, Matt. Like, um, like the different ice cream recipes, uh, Very good, right. I mean, I, I see that a lot. I mean, have you guys seen this? No, yes, no? Never on Facebook? Have you ever seen it asked, like, what's your favorite memory? Even St. Francis does it. They say sometimes, you know, what's your favorite, to the alumni page, what's your favorite fall memory of St. Francis? You guys you ever see those kind of things? And, you know, I met my wife here. Whatever it might be, people write little things. Go ahead, Frank. What about a couple? What about, like, a part of the product or something? Very good. All the time you'll see those kind of things, right? Like we're thinking about adding this, what do you think about the next flavor this should be? Or what do you think about our next product? So that is them trying to strengthen that relationship. So you guys gave me some great examples of number of relationships, the way they try to increase the number of relationships. And they also try to engage you, right? To strengthen that relationship, you know? Engage you. Maybe take a picture of something and tweet it out with a hashtag. Maybe put up a recipe, maybe, maybe create, uh, Suggest a new product enhancement, whatever it might be. That is creating a strength of relationship. Now, they can't really control what resources you control, but obviously there are people and there are companies that know who are the, who are the people that they want, right? If, if you are uh, young and you're connected to a lot of 18 to 25 year olds, there are companies that will tell you this would be a good person to try to engage you to get to engage in your company. It's, that, it's down to that. Really, it is, okay? Uh, there's a company called Axion. You can get about any information you want about people from Axion. Any kind of online information, you can get it. Um, have you ever seen, um, there are companies like maybe baby, baby companies, like baby product companies. They will give someone products and ask them to do what with it? Write a review, make a video review of it. Why? Because they know they have a lot of followers that follow their blogs and if they like their product, they have a lot of social influence, yes? A 
and they, they can they can they can uh, leverage that. Uh, I'm running out of time here. It's, what time is it? 9:45. 47. 47. Okay. One thing I would like you guys to do. Okay, we have three minutes. I want to explain our next assignment, which is due next Wednesday, a week from today. It is on. Under the Assignments tab, it says Social Media Case Study. Everyone has been given a company and a case study. So Frank has been given Target, Plum, and he mentioned airlines today. So great, I gave you an airline. You got Delta, okay? Earl has been given Sports Illustrated, and you can see Kahari's, WWE, so you can see, okay, all these case studies. Now, what I want you to do is answer these questions. So first, let me show you where these cases are. Under course material by chapter, under chapter eight, under social media case studies, there are many case studies about how companies use social media. So if I go to the Target one, I can't remember who was given Target, but it's about a page, okay? It's not a big thing, it's on Contently. They're a little bit old, they're from August 2012, so they're a little bit older, like over two years old. But it talks about how Target uses Facebook to implement its strategy. So you can see it's about, it's not very long, it's about a page, about a page and a half. I want you to read that case study, and then I want you to answer these questions. So I have to go back here. Summarize the content of the case study. So maybe a paragraph about what the case study is about. Number two, highlight areas of the case study that show how the organization is using social media to increase its social capital by either increasing the number of relationships, we just talked about that, or increasing the strengths of those relationships. Number three, look at the organization's use of social media critically and point out the positives of this particular and any potential risk or problems that could occur as a result of usage of social media. Four, make suggestions on how the organization may be able to add to its current use of social media. And five, these cases are like nearly two years old. So I want you to go out to their Twitter page or their Facebook page or whatever their case is talking about and see if they've changed strategies at all. Right? Are they doing something else that you can update the class on? Now, this is a group project. If you are target, you need to buddy up with the other target folks. Okay? If you are WWE, you need to buddy up with the WWE folks. On Friday, okay, after our, uh, our article presentations, I'll let you have some time to get into your groups and start this, which is due Friday. Okay? You can ask these questions at that point. You all get the same grade. So if there's four in your group and you do a crappy job, you all get it. If you do a great job, you all get it. Okay? So I don't care if there's an anchor. I know there's going to be an anchor. What's that? Like four. It's going to be next Wednesday, a week from today. Any questions on that? All right. Have a great day. You can't just do it here. You got you got all kind of extra. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You, were you on the schedule? I just came to right now. I'm so good. Um, and I wasn't today. You guys are for plumbing then. Yeah, sure. I wanted to ask you what you thought of uh, what the class did that you watched it. Like, did you have any schedule or anything? Oh, you're doing schedule. Yeah, you still had it. Oh, okay.
I have to head to uh, Mr. Eckling's class. I know. I'm going to Yeah. What were you doing? So which one do you want? What are you doing? I don't know. How I don't know. It was saying no. There are no meat at the bottom of the class. And then when I add it, it says there's no meat. But you're asking only the time? You can do it. I don't know what you're doing. You're killing me. 